Welcome everyone to Vulcan Deckmasters week two, day two with me, Frodan. We're just done casting the second match of the day between Surrender and Ivan. Surrender taking it 2 0 over the uh, Magic Player, the Gathering Pro. Pro. It's. Yep. Um, Ivan's still struggling a little bit. Uh, definitely some plays where the outcome would have changed if he was able to see both hands and understand what was going to be drawn. But such is the nature of card games and such is the nature of transitioning. You know, if he's playing a lot of magic still, it's, it's just hard to understand fully in depth both aspects of the game at the highest level where you have to play around cards and understand each deck and match up specifically as much as you can. So don't blame him whatsoever, but being able to at least get here to qualify for the event is still noteworthy indeed. Now, these two guys coming up here are two players that have recently been making some pretty good, big splashes over at DreamHack. Hawkeye finished 7-0 in Swiss. Gar finished 5-2, one of the top players that didn't make it to the round of eight, but still very respected uh, in the European region. And I'm, I want to see if Hawkeye can follow up his results because he's done well in a lot of um, online events, but offline, uh, he's really starting to pick it up as well. So I want to see if he can continue to make that jump up to be one of the most respected players in Europe. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where like, I know him at this point for his shaman play. And funny enough, Gara is also known for his shaman play. So those two players love their shaman. But oddly enough, Gara, best shaman, didn't bring the shaman to the lineup, uh, whereas Hawkeye did. So we're, we, we're going to see some shaman play. In fact, it's going to be in the first match here. Uh, Hawkeye bringing shaman, druid, warlock. His warlock's out of the way. Gara's got mage, hunter, warrior with a warrior band. So... I mean, Shaman is really, it's a weird deck to bring, but a lot of people have been uh, saying that Midrange Hunter is losing momentum. And as a result, maybe that will allow Shaman to come back somewhat. Yeah, I mean, any deck that's on the top, people eventually start countering and right. start having really good cards that swing the matchup too much. If you become too predictable, it's one of the... Greatest weaknesses, not necessarily bad play, because sometimes that doesn't even stop players from being able to win the game. But you know, if you're too predictable, that's definitely one of the most dangerous aspects to be as a player. So mixing it up constantly is important. But Hawkeye is such a weird shaman player. He doesn't even play in the normal list. He's got the Rubian eggs, and he's got the Blood Mage Thanos. That's already two cards that you don't see in the typical shaman list. Well, I remember back in Naxx Ramas, like that was the shaman list, right? Nerubian Egg, Haunted Creepers, uh, Undertaker, of course, back then, but not not anymore. <laughs> that guy's been taken out. But oh it was, man, it was, that was like the the golden era of shaman for a bit, at least. Like mid-range shaman really started picking up steam at that point. Uh, Flame Tongue Totem working so well with the egg. He tried to yeah. set it up here, it didn't work out. Well, I mean, he got the egg pop successfully, but uh, he did end up losing the Nerubian for the Flame Cannon. And now the Earth Shock here on the Mad Science is really important so that he can control the board. If, yeah, if, not he, letting if he could force a ping out, he'd be great. Wow. Yeah, this is really good now for Hawkeye to potentially set up if he get, picks up an easy draw here. Not the okay. most amazing, but it's not that bad when you've got a Defend of Argus and Flame Tongue Totem on the back end. Yeah, and he's got some okay curves. You know, Harris the next turn, Defender following turn, Flame Tongue to really squeeze in whenever he needs to pick up trades. Yeah, it's uh, the Alakir though. One a card that I mean, it, it hasn't been phased out completely, but a lot of the list that Shaman played recently really didn't include it too much. Um, even though mm -hmm. it was initially hailed as unplayable, then it became a staple. I remember that from the the olden days. Alakir not played in many mid range. It's like it's like mid range shaman just doesn't see much play, baseline. So, shaman is just not respected. I think you bring I, up that's a really right. fun point yeah. that Alakir is like a really good representation of like what shaman is. People like every time people approach shaman class, they're like this is unplayable. You know, every every pro doesn't <laughs> bring it to tournaments, and people are losing with yeah. it. And then at the same time, when you play it and you're losing against it, you're like, how does this deck ever lose? You know, because like Shaman's such high value and you get like ridiculous trades on board and it maintains board control. And that's the same way like Alec here functions too. It's like, you know, people consider it one of the weakest class legendaries before GVG came out. And then uh, when then started using it a lot, it's like, actually, it's not bad. Maybe it's even good. Maybe it's even great when you need to use it in pinch scenarios. Yeah. And the Hawkeye here is so big. Like, he actually gets to get possibly a second draw with his Mana Tide if he decides to not sack it. I would be surprised if he decided to sacrifice it. I mean, the, the, you would never do that to your own little Mana Tide totem, would you? 
It seems to be the best tempo play, though. Not maybe the best value play if you want to yeah. start getting card advantage. I wonder. There is. Is there an alternative? Not really. Totem and. I mean, Drake on the far left and just pass. I guess just if that, you anticipate that your opponent will kill the mana tide totem, then you, you can, can still get mental the tempo. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, at this point, do you know it's tempo mage? Is, is there any sign from Garo that it is tempo mage? Yeah, no? you saw the mechanic. The mechanical yeti. yeti. You have to mm -hmm. assume that's the case. Mm -hmm. Do you buff your flame tongue so that if he tries to kill, you can then fire elemental? Yes, he does. Wow, I love that. Okay. I love that, Hawkeye. Yeah, so, I mean, Hawkeye understands his class better than probably most players in the world. So, I'm going to go ahead and lean with him on this one. I think this is a really smart play if you're trying to fish out the value off the Azure Drake. And you also get to build the board without giving up your own. Because th what the Fire Elemental did was if your opponent had Fireball, he'd be able to leverage that and play something else. And all of a sudden, his board's much stronger than you. And you have a Flame Tongue Tone to 0-3. That's been stranded out there. Not to mention, you also get to draw another card. So uh, there's a lot of pros to this play too. And assuming it works out good, like Gara doesn't have like a perfect response with frost bolts, then it'd be all it'd be all good. Yeah, it's in one flame cannon, so that one response out of the way. And if the Drake ends up going for that Drake, and they're both trading with each other, a Manatite could get another card yet, which honestly is a bit worrying if you're in Gara's position. He's played enough Shaman to know how dangerous a mana tide gets. Like, a Shaman with card advantage is nearly unstoppable. All right. Well, Fire Elemental is looking pretty good, but you also want to hesitate to see if there's any better plays. Do you see anything, maybe, Noxious? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like... I could, could you... No, you couldn't justify that, could you? Hexing this guy makes no sense. It just depends. Like, do you want to sacrifice the mana tide? That's the question. Do you let him trade into it at this point? Because if you play the fire elemental, he's going to kill the fire elemental, isn't he? You have such a good quality hand. Like, you're not going to be able to dump all of it at one time. He just wants to draw more cards. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I agree with him. That's the way uh, Shaman ends up winning. Is like they typically don't. That's their biggest drawback, I think, is they have to play two Drakes auto includes, and the Blood Mage Thalos very often. Um, gotcha. Need the card draw. Interesting that Gara has a second mechanical Yeti, because normally you don't have space in your deck to put two Yetis, two Shredders, like the Clockwork Gnome, because you just eventually have too much that you want to play on the board, and you have to give up some of your other threats um, or spells. And so if he puts a second Yeti in, I wonder what he's taking out. And I wonder if he's trying to go really hard on his Antonitis to be his way to win. Because if he can get some damage in on his opponent, he can pick up the fireballs easy with spare parts. Yeah. And I know that he's digging really hard for that cloak field. So that way he can play the Antonitis, cloak it for a turn, and then get major fireballs the following turn. Uh, the old mech shaman away, except you put it in tempo a bit more. Uh, the old mech mage, that is. Yeah, not mech shaman. Yeah, Mech can, you, can you imagine Mech Shaman actually. with Antonitis? I think I would just quit the game right there. <laughs> that that yeah. would be it. That, that is it. This is the moment where it leaves. Ridiculous. All right, so Harrison Jones comes down here. Just a little body to force Gara to respond to. Not even guaranteed with all those boom bots. Now he's got to handle the Manatide and the Harrison Jones. That Manatide's insane. It it is the MVP single handedly because he's been able to protect it so much, but not so not single handedly. But it's been a large part responsible for why Hawkeye might be in a posture to win this game here. Yeah. So you would say it's like a double handedly winning Manatide. Yeah. Okay. Good. Something like that. Oh man, mm. this is there's a lot of spells to play with that Flame Waker and Sorcerer's Apprentice there. Yeah, I feel like maybe that's. The way to go here. Um, drop the mana worm as well. But how much mana does that leave? That only leaves you two mana. I don't know if I. I guess you have the taunt, so you could still play two unstable portals and the. Uh, yeah. The rusty I don't horn. That's not. not. That's, uh, yeah. That's so much spray onto the board. And your opponent has to have lightning storm. Not to mention, you might even pick up a small minion that can help you, like if you have a Stone Toast Bull or like Iron Ford Rifleman. He picks up Cycling, not that bad, but now the, the hits have to come in. This is taking way too long. This is taking way too long for Gara. 
Yeah, uh, he needed to taunt. Oh, Whoa. he got the hit on the the Harrison Jones. <laughs> ha! <He picked laughs> an Argent Squire. Jeez. Oh, man. And where's okay. the lightning storm now? Not here. Wait. How much damage does Alec here deal? 18, right? Yes, but he has needs to have 10 mana to do that. If he can set up the Flame Tongue Totem ahead of time, he can also get even more damage from it. But that's um, that's idealistic. Yeah. What what card is the Alakir covering? Like Alakir doesn't get much camera time in general, so he's trying to really milk it. But yeah, he's covering I'm not, a, I'm another card. Sure what it is. Yeah, I I thought it was Defend of Argus, but it's actually on the left, so it's got to oh, be something. Oh, it's the else. Fire Elemental. So he right. still has a Fire Elemental. He can shoot down the the Mana Worm. There's no Mirror Entity, correct? Uh, no, so, no. So he could Earth still, Shock. Yeah, he can Earth Shock. And then Rock Fighter. Yeah, it seems to be appropriate. He totems! So he wants to get the spell power totem? He's trying to set up the Alakir double Rock Fighter to kill. He's doing it! <laughs> oh man, that Archimage Gen tonight is going to give Gara a crazy amount of fireballs here. Uh oh. Wait. Uh. Six, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, it's definitely Antonidas play. What if he picks up Arcan missiles? Could he have cut? Oh the man, missile? that'd be awesome. And those were pretty decent shots so far. He rusty horns the Antonidas because I don't think the really people are playing Black Knight. Oh man, two more shots onto the Fire Elemental gives him a chance for him to use this Time Rewinder. Not on I the Slain Waker, though. I would probably use it. Like, it might sound weird, but I think I'd be happier to use it on the Novice than the, uh... Yeah. Than either one two, because if you use it on the other two, then you can't guarantee. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, you, put, you pick up the Sorcerer's Apprentice and you lose the spells, but the important thing is that if the Novice wasn't able to get the trade, you had to use the Flame Waker, and that's not what you want. Well, this game turned around very quickly. And Hawkeye went for value on his card draws, so he he's got a full hand. Yeah, but he's, he's gonna, gonna have need some help. Alakir here, perhaps. I mean, the double rock biter with Alakir here is pretty much a mandatory play. But then, what's your win condition? How do you push for damage at this point? The mage has three fireballs in hand. You only know of two, of course, um, since you've, you've got only Ragnaros. Seen the Ragnaros can help you catch up, and then you have Healbot to stave off the damage. Wait. Actually, Hawkeye knows that there's three of them. In the hand because of arcane intellect. That's right. Mm, that's also correct. So if you know your opponent has 18, 18 damage, damage, you remove everything except the novice on board. Mm, it's not. That's not the worst option in the world. You do again. You have some pretty good quality minions. You have Ragnaros. You have sticky minions. You have heal. He even has. Time Rewinder to put the antique heal bot back in his hand <laughs> if he needs to heal back. That may actually be like the mandatory play that he's got to make in the next few turns. Oh, wow. Yeah, Drake's not bad. He also can set up just like Mana Worm to start growing again. Mm hmm. Yeah, put it out. Maybe see if you can get yourself. Because, I mean, there's a few plays you can make here. Some of them with Sorcerer's Apprentice, lower the cost of what he's got, and kill off that Alakir. Right. Depends uh, how aggressive he wants to be with those fireballs, really. I mean, if he goes full face, he's going to get punished because the heal bot's there with the time rewinder. Yeah. The Drake is definitely important to play, though, because, again, it, it's a 4 4 body. Drawing the card is nice. You don't really necessarily need more cards, but. The important thing is you need to set up the strongest board possible so that Shaman can't easily seize back the momentum. So Dra I'm I'm feeling like like Drake into Mana Worm Fireball, but yeah, that's what I'm looking also, at as well. It's he also might be feeling like he wants to set up Mirror Entity, so that way he can start getting value off of that, and then get Mad Scientist is not dead in his hand. Like, you could play okay. everything, basically, with the, the Mana Worm if he wants to. Oh, wait. That's it. He's just going all in. Oh. Okay, well, right, Hawkeye's we going to punish that. We, we actually yeah. discounted this knowing the hand of the opponent, but this is going to be... 
Yeah, this is an excellent play um, from Gar. People might be like, well, obviously he's just going to get completely uh, you know, destroyed by this antique heel bot play. But um, without you know, the information, it's... Without that information, you don't really even think Shaman has healing normally. I mean, I think you expect one heal bot, but do you risk your entire game plan on the possibility that there that is there already? Um, you force him to have it. I yeah, mean, most basically. likely you might be holding lightning storms, feral spirits, second hex. Those are the really common things that you see. And even then, Shaman might have one heal bot. Is he playing two? You know, that, that's very rarely. Yeah, I mean, usually it's a one of. You won't see two. So, uh, kind of liking this here. Gara going all in, being very honest. He sees a heal bot, and he's got a little bit of a nod to acknowledge the fact that this is not what he was hoping for. And Hawkeye is not going to bring back the heal bot. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's. Where do you really use the heal bot on? I mean, the time winder on if you don't use it on the heal bot. Defender of Argus, I guess, but that that's the only other option he's really got. But this board is. Yeah, yeah okay. I could see that. Maybe. I mean, this is also an opportunity for Guard just to flame strike with the Man mm -hmm. Worm and push. Yeah. When, when else do you really get that opportunity? You could fireball water. Well, you know what? He's going to try to log this board down with Lothab. Yeah, this is also appropriate. Instead of, uh, you know, this board's not terribly intimidating. Sure, he loses the Azure Drake trade into the, the heal He bot. loses everything, actually. Oh, you're right. That Fire Elemental draw um, also is really big, too, in the future turns, because no matter what mid small mini sets up like a Mana Worm, it gets shut or, down. So. Or Flame Tongue. Right, right. Actually, that's the case. You can sh shut down the flame song right now. I was thinking double shredder, but yeah, I, it's actually it depends on what he wants to do. I mean, the, the flame song's not a big threat right now. Yeah, double shredder is probably the better play. It's just like Maybe whatever. Even Ragnaros, right? What, 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 <laughs> is there Ragnaros? Yeah. yeah, why not? Right? It was the was the drawback? There's if really none he here. He has big game hunter, and but then that, no. Hey, if you have bigger hammer, then you fire elemental it. Yeah. No one's really running polymorph in Tempo Mage. And he uses unstable portal, so it's not like he has like some crazy way to grab minions that can seize back the board. Yeah, Archimage is already out of the way, so. And he's gonna go for the Ragnaros, not even trading into Lothar, keeping the heal bot alive. And hoping it goes for the 50 50. Huh. That's a well, flame that strike. Yeah. There you go. So you guys said, uh, how is he going to get this board back? Well, there it is. How much damage does he have right now? He's got 11, 12. If that, if that heal bot was at 1 HP, he had lethal. Hmm. But, um... So you just play spell wow. damage to buff that ping. Obviously. Probably no. <laughs> you That's right. You play Shadow Form itself. right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just go all in on that. It kind of looks like Shadow Form, doesn't it? It's got that purple yeah. fire. Yeah, they should yeah. change that ball to purple, by the way. Like, it makes no sense. Why is it still, uh, why is it still well, orange? It, it is a little cool where it, like, converts it to purple. It, it'd be awesome if it went orange and it just, like, glowed purple every time you hovered over or something like that. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'd be really surprised if he didn't flame strike here. Yeah, I thought he was not gonna flame strike for a second there, and I was getting almost worried. Now my question is, do you even kill Rag when you can deal five and kill him next turn guaranteed with Frostbolt Fireball Ping? That's or a really good question. A, I don't know. A crack. You're worried play. about potentially dying, right? If he shot you in the face. I don't know. I would. I would have probably been. I, maybe I'm more reckless than all these players. I see all the, their non SMO plays, and uh, I don't understand them. That's a really valid criticism in the sense that it could have costed Gara. Or will it? I don't know. Whoa, he's back to back run around fire. I think he's here. just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Playing his outs. He's like, eh, I can arcane and elect the lethal, no problem. Yeah. Do you just he frostbolt the fire Ellie or like you just ping something? I would have almost wanted to frostbolt. Is Gara really that worried about the, the shenanigans that Hawkeye can pull off at this point? He's so close to getting it, man. It's like, oh, this game was really close. I mean, yeah. a lot of small things could have gone either way. Like, who knows? What if Rag get that low up and then right? That, clear that would have been a very different story. Actually, he would be dead because the extra eight damage from the following turn would have been 
He would have had to use Fireball and Frost Bolt on the, on the following turn, so that would make a bit of a difference, but those games sometimes come down to 50-50s. Decisions were made in this game. The, I think not having all the information obviously gives you, uh, you know, a reason to make those. And I, I think like there was a turn with a mirror entity hit to Flame Tongue Totem. That's not at all what uh, Gar was looking for. Yeah. Um, but and generally speaking, Shaman has a lot of low minions, like Haunted Creeper and stuff that would have been lower value. But um, the important thing was that Gar was trying to maximize his hand at every single opportunity. And so was Hawkeye. And that was an excellent game. And that's definitely one of the reasons why people love, like watching um, you know, Shaman being able to play. Because it, it, it is a really interesting dynamic where they try to build the board. There's a lot of interaction there. Yeah, and and Hawkeye's going to queue it up again. But this time it's up against Hunter. But it's not the worst. Shot. It's no, not it's not worst. as bad as people made it. I don't know. Like a lot of people in in the past said that it was like the most horrendous matchup, and that has been an opinion that's also on the on the rise. Um, but I'd say it's actually like I wouldn't say favored for the shaman, but it's like a coin flip, kind of a coin flip. It's not the eighty percent, twenty percent that some people say it is. Nah, it's certainly not. Those people are just mad and bad. Mad cause bad. So don't listen to the matches. They're not pretty like you are. And glorious at this matchup. The most important thing about uh, this is that Shaman has to seize the board because if Shaman controls the board, there's almost nothing Hunter can do except race. And if he has heal bots, then he's good to go. He's got Hex on the high mains and he's got like ways to build the board, but his early game hand is looking really awkward right now. Yeah, he needs to, he won't probably to find those Earth Shocks. Um, a Flame Tongue Totem wouldn't even be that, but it, it, maybe Zombie Chow as well. Don't know if he's got those, but that's a really good card against Hunter early on. So not exactly the best cards he wanted. And Gar is going to keep curving, though, with Animal Companion, Eagle Horn Bow on 4. Not the perfect curve, but not a bad one either. Allows you to control the board with those 1-1s. One so Gar's curve is fine, where Hawkeye's is looking a bit wonky. Oh, wow. An amazing card here against Shaman. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Explosive Trap is... Great to pick up in the following turn. I, I, I guess Gar really wants to set up for weapon value. Um, I think he was also scared about Animal Companion potentially being poor if his he rolled a Huffer and then the opponent got some easy way to clear it. And the defensive Argus that could have gotten value if there were more than one Spiders here. Yeah. Oh. How do you feel about uh, just Mad Side Totem? I think I like it. It forces a response immediately. Like, he has to use his bow on it, which means you're not going to give him more charges if a trap drops. It's also deflecting damage away from your face, which, you know, relevant. If Houndmaster's picked up, though, Gara is going to be in a, like, he's going to be dancing. Oh. No he such still thing. can roll Animal Companion. It's two out of three chances he can easily clear the board and seize command of the, um, of the mid game here, because he's got really good cards to leverage the board and he can still continue to push. He's going to optimize his mana curve though. I think Hunter players, I, I know every single Hunter player, the one thing that, if they're, if they're a good Hunter player, and you know, I know a lot of people are immediately are fishy, she's like, oh, oh good Hunter player, Cap. <laughs> I'm talking about like the best Hunter players who the like, real, yeah. yeah, like Jab and all these other people who like specialize in it, you know, Muzzy, etc. Um, Death Star almost. Yeah, Death Star, another really great Hunter player and Gar is one of them. Um, the most important thing that irks them the most is when they p don't man utilize all their mana and they realize they missed a hunter hero power. Um, that's like the number one thing that they care a lot about above everything else. So you can tell that they, he really values making sure that he can play on curve in the most optimal manner possible. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of logical when you think about it because of the way that hunter works, no draw, when, means that you have to use that inevitability to your, you know, to, I guess the best you can. Mm -hmm. I guess the exception is when you're on turn 5 and you're floating 2 mana you, and you're going to play a high main on the following turn. Might as well just put down the trap. Now there is an interesting thing that um, explosive traps normally is great against Shaman because it eliminates the totems because they all have 2 health or less. But he's got 2 Nerupian eggs. I wonder if that's going to play a factor at all considering that now he can go for like Hex and put up two four fours and pretty much commandingly seize the board control or is it too much damage i don't know oh man he missed out on that explosive value with the egg unless That's he's right. still, he might get it afterwards with the defensive argus though 
Yeah. Oh god. Oh, this is a bit. Of, he's gonna have to play his two Nurugan eggs here, right? Or is he gonna play the Shredder instead? Yeah, Shredder's just more power. Um, now that you know Explosive was gone, I think I wonder if Hawkeye anticipated maybe just having it be Snake Trap. Mm -hmm, that's but, what I think because that mm -hmm. play really seemed to me that he was playing around Snake Trap and Freezing at the same time. Yeah, but now he's taking a lot of punishment for it. These one ones are adding up. This Haunted Creeper, they, I mean, it's been there since turns one and two, right? <laughs> Collectively, yeah, it, it's almost a pyro blast or fireball at this point. And now, how do you go through the hex? It's like the, the drawback of hex is showing up. You have to taunt up behind the Nerubian eggs. Yeah, it's it was lightning by. storm time, but yeah. he doesn't have it. Um. Second Hex. Hex Heal Bot? Okay. You know what? Hex Heal Bot is also a really decent play. Yeah. I like it. I really like it. What are the odds of a second high main here, right? Not as high and important as even building the board and staying out of damage potential, game ending game uh, damage. So Gara has tracking. And he has 810 damage right now. He can buff up the frog. <laughs> yeah. Uh. It's all about the frog. Quick shot's also appropriate because you can eliminate the shredder off the board. Mm -hmm. Or the like heal the Iron Beak Yeah. Mm -hmm. What to do? Yeah, he could clean this board completely if he wants to. Like Iron Beak, Kill Command, Quick Shot. Again, still vulnerable to Lightning Storm, but if your opponent had it, you know he would have played it about, you know, 17 turns ago. Mm -hmm. So. Gara also does have Snake Trap, so Hawkeye is not necessarily wrong to attack. What to do. Into that, the Wait. way it happened. See, this is the type of thing Gara does that nobody else does. He runs three traps, right? Like one of each. I've seen like two freezings, one explosive, two freezings, one snake, two snakes, one freezing. Mix of like two different traps, but. That's right. He's got the platter, the platter trap. It's like the, the, the trap sampler. <laughs> Would you like uh, a snake with that explosive? <laughs> God. Well, how about a snipe? Right, just to kill the patrons. I'd love that. And it kills the Azure Drakes right now, which actually in the metagame, they're prevalent like just about everywhere but in, uh, in Hunter. Yeah. Well, you got it's the heal bot down. Time, but, uh, isn't it? Yeah. I, I think you have to because you're just taking too much damage at this point. And you might want to even just like sit on the fact that you're gonna really need this heal bot to somehow bounce back with a freezing trap. But unfortunately, I don't think you can you can play like that. I think you gotta give it up. He's trying to drag it to the Houndmaster, and then he's like, wait, that doesn't We can work. rock fight her in the <laughs> Like maybe there's a glitch. Maybe the game will let me. <laughs> maybe the innkeeper will forget the rules for about five seconds and trade to this houndmaster. That is two damage off lethal. That is lethal. That is lethal. Is it? Yeah. Uh, does he have enough mana to do it? Yeah, 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 you should be able to. So, uh, well, good, good effort here from Hawkeye with the Shaman. Very close games overall. Um, but because uh, you know, I feel like Hawkeye was on the verge of being able to stabilize, and if he was able to, then Hunter couldn't do anything. But uh, that's going to wrap it up, and Gara takes the series 2-0. Yeah, it's a pretty convincing series. Again, you know, Shaman, regarded by a lot of people as probably one of the weaker classes at the moment. And there's plenty of threads, you know, on Reddit coming about um, saying, hey, this is how we need to fix Shaman, and we should cut Overload and let them have their tools. But I'm sure we'll get something new for Shamans eventually, or the metagame will cycle, and then Shamans will finally have their, their place, their rightful yeah. place at the top where they used to be a long time ago. In the meantime, guys, we're going to be going for a short break and then we're going to be casting Kang versus Nairia. Uh, Nairia actually, I mean, Kalento has been playing that OTK Worgen deck um, that I remember Nairia for. So I hope Nairia also tries to bring that to the tournament, uh, although I doubt it'll be the case. And before we go, a little shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring the event and Vulcan, of course, for organizing it. So if you want to check out squarespace.com slash deckmasters, it's a website to build websites. It's a never-ending cycle of websites, basically. So if you want to check them out, do so. In the meantime, we'll be back in a short break. <laughs>